Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Brix BRX Do More PLC to Modbus Remote I.O. Controller BX-MBIO. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So open my screen here. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, communicate our Brix PLC to our remote I.O. using Modbus TCP and RTU. Now TCP uses uh, Ethernet and we need an IP address for that. And RTU uses Serial and we're going to be using RS-485 for the media to actually communicate to that controller. So the first thing we'll do is actually we'll look at um, our software and this is our uh, Do More Designer software. If we go into PLC and we can select um, System Configuration or we can go to our Project Browser and we can select System Configuration from there. Now from here we can see that this is our Ethernet port configuration and currently I have an IP address of 192.168.1.11. I can hit the configure and then this is where we'd actually set our static address for this. And you'll see the module number, the name, we can give it a descriptive name if we want. So this is, contains our IP address, our subnet mask, our gateway and our DNS. So we'll just cancel that. You'll also notice here that we have our Modbus TCP server configuration and we have enabled our Modbus uh, TCP server so this allows us to now communicate Modbus uh, to our remote unit and then we will leave our maximum con 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 concurrent sessions at 4 our client inactivity timeout at 60 seconds and our, our TCP port number at 502 which is the default for Modbus. Now the other part of this page here you'll see my serial port configuration is my um, protocol and I'm going to make sure that the Modbus RTU client or master is selected and then we have our port type which we're going to be using RS-485 and we have enabled our 120 ohm termination which has to be at each end or at least at one end of our RS-485 um, communication wire and then we hit the change and this is our port settings so our timeout for our Modbus and retries and then our port settings um, that must match exactly what we have in our remote IO unit so they've been all set, hit OK, and we'll cancel out of that one. And now what we do is we can actually look at our um, Modbus um, I.O. controller, and we do that through our launch pad, and we go to Net, uh, Net Edit 3, which we've done last time, and we've configured our unit. We will select the the MBIO module and you'll see our module information we can select our settings and our general settings here this actually has our IP address that we need for to program so this is our address that we'll have on our remote IO unit let's hit cancel there and then under the serial port settings this is the serial port settings for it which must match the settings that we just referred to on our, our bricks PLC itself. So next what we'll do, so they they do match. Then we can look at our Modbus information and if we start our web-based configuration and we can go down, this is our web-based information, this is the mod, this is the IP address of our unit. If we look at the IO mapping it will actually go through our, our maps that we have for our information that we have on our hardware. So let's just go and 
look at our physical hardware and what you'll see is we have our uh, BRX uh, or Bricks PLC located right here and we have our uh, BX-MBIO Modbus IO module, remote IO module and in that we have our analog input we have our analog output or sorry, analog input, analog output, and we have digital I.O. And you can see here that we have our Ethernet connection that we are communicating back. And we also have our 45 connection. On our bricks, we have our 45 connection. Again, it's connected back into our remote I.O. unit and we have our ethernet connection back into our hub which is now communicating back to our controller here and currently right now you can see that we have communication on both both ends so we are communicating and passing information back and forth which is corresponding to our modbus io map that we see up here so on our discrete input and output you can see that i look at uh, my coils right here okay so my inputs I'm looking at my coils one to one to four and I'm looking at uh, if I look at my holding registers are there then if I have my analog input I'm looking at address 30,001 to 30,008 and on my analog output I'm looking at 40,001 to 40,008. So there's my eight different analog in, eight different analog, analog out, and my digital I.O. So that's where all of the mapping is. So let's go back to our program. We'll just close this off. And we'll go to our project browser. And in our project browser, we actually have our main program. And then we have two um, sub-programs one handling my communication to my through my TCP Modbus and one handling through my Modbus RTU. So let's look at the main program first. And the main program, we actually call up, the first thing we do is call up our TCP um, Modbus communication. So let's go to it. And here I've mapped exactly what we're communicating to. And what we're doing is we're using Modbus write to the network. And so the first one here is what we're going to do is look at the um, error messages or any errors that we have on our system first. So we look at those errors and what we'll do is we will actually write the value um, of zero. Let's call this up. We'll actually write the value or common value or constant of zero into two registers starting at 10,001 and 10,002 which are my two error messages so I write them out just to reset that module next what I do is I also look for the communication uh, C16 which we'll find later on so the first thing I do for scan flag I reset the module then we come down here and the next one we do is we set the timeout for the module. So here it is address 10,007 and we put in the milliseconds that we want in order to time out the module. In this case here we have 3,000 which is 3 seconds. So which means that if I pull the, the uh, communications out or there's the unit loses communication it will take three seconds and then what will happen is the module then will reset or have an error flag so that we can pick that up and and later on and it will be an indication on our actual module that we have an error next what we do is we will read the analog input signals and again we look at um, our read input registers so the address is three, and we're going to read from um, plus the offset, which is one to eight. So we read those registers in. Then what we do is we will 
then write those registers or write our analog output registers and we're actually writing them at four so 40,001 to 40,008 which is right here then after that we will actually read our discrete inputs from our rack so I'll read discrete inputs and our offset is one so it's 10,001 10,004 and then finally what we'll do is we will write our actual outputs themselves so we'll write single register and that uh, comes at 40,000 uh, or 40,000 or 42,000 and one and we write those outputs then what we do is we're actually going to read the error messages once again and if the error message is okay or it's equal to zero then we'll go back and we'll start reading our analog again if our error message meaning that, that we had a fault occur and we pick up that error and then we go back and then we reset where we also had the first scan flag so that's exactly what we're going to do in our program so then we go back to the main so after we called up our modbus tcp then what we'll do is we uh, we run our our communicate modbus rtu now the rtu is going to do exactly the same thing so now we're going to have two different versions of controlling the same io so we'll just have to uh, accommodate for that so here what we do is again first scan flag we reset the module and remember this is going through our rs485 our serial communication port then what we do is we'll set our uh, remote timeout rack to three seconds then we read our analog input same addresses except for we're going through our device which is our at serial device now and just to let you know what that looks like here we go here so we're reading our inputs and that's our addresses and it's through our serial device not our IP address anymore Then we write our analog outputs. We read our inputs, uh, discrete inputs. We write our discrete inputs. And then we read the, the error registers again. We read the two of them. And if we have, if everything's fine, it goes back and starts reading our analog again. If we have a fault, then we go back and we reset that, that module. So going back to the main again, what we've done is set up a simple uh, timer. And our timer here uses the analog input signal, which is close to zero right now. So that's why it's flashing. And if I have the, the first timer, not the second timer, or the second timer is done and it's greater than 100, then I turn on my discrete output itself. So because it's going too quickly, it's not below or it's not above 100, so it's not going to do anything yet. And you notice I have two outputs. My outputs are mapped to individual relays. So my TCP, my discrete output, uses uh, V20 bit zero, and my RTU, Modbus discrete output, uses V120 bit zero. I must turn them both on because if I don't. If I turn the first one on and not the second one, the second one's always going to write a zero. The first one's going to write a, uh, a one or turn it on and I'll have some chattering. So I must control both simply because we're demonstrating both the Modbus RTU and TCP on our communication network. So let's just plug our battery in for our analog signal. And what we'll do is once you plug the battery in, you can see now it's we have a signal and we can actually adjust that down. And let's just adjust it right down. And we'll put in oh around it's 1.33 seconds. So you can see now my output is actually turning on and off located right here. 
So very simple and straightforward to actually use the Modbus remote IO unit. And for this, this is kind of unique because we're using both the Modbus TCP and RTU at the same time in order to control our IO on that remote rack. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. Remember to visit the website at ACC Automation to get all the details as well as download the actual software and sample programming that you see here. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. Now a new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.